Hi, welcome to the Poetry Vlog. Today I have two special guests with me. I have Safia Carmine Jones and Andrea Crawford. Safia also is by Safi. Um, why don't you two introduce yourselves, actually? Tell everyone a little bit about how we know each other and then what you do with, that you consider art and what you think of when you think of poetry and or pop culture. Oh, okay, so the easy ones. Um, I, no pressure. <laughs> I know Chelsea because we're in the same grad program and she's one of my closest friends in Seattle, um, and thanks to that program. Um, what do I, what was the other question? I don't even remember. Uh, uh, like poetry and pop culture? Sure, like, like what would you call those things, and what do you do, kind of, in general? Oh, I, um, I, well, um, I'm exam reading right now, and I am interested in um, methods of diagnoses, and queer theory, disability studies, and uh, critical race theory, and um, I, when I think of poetry and pop culture, I think that the two should be merged at all times. <laughs> right, <laughs> yes, there is no <laughs> distinction. <laughs> In colloquial speech, uh, Safi is an amazing academic and badass feminist, <laughs> queer, all-around anti-racist scholar who does amazing work and teaches her students everything they need to learn in life, love, happiness, and school. All right, Andrea. Um, so, I well, I know Chelsea through Safi. We are roommates um, and lived together for about four years now. Mm -hmm. um, moved to Seattle almost together and... Uh, Broke up with our horrible boyfriends almost together. Well, <laughs> pretty horrible, much the, almost husband. the same day. Yeah. Um, so we're, we like to say we're trauma bonded. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then what I do here, um, so I am a visual artist. I work primarily in printing. Um, for work, I just manage a small uh, company here uh, that has a couple different locations that I will admit from this <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's a waxing company and um, my drawing is primarily stream of consciousness work and um, unplanned to see kind of what comes out um, and it's kind of fitting that I happen to come here because I draw kind of from a very literary standpoint and I think that my work is very narrative in one piece without being uh, an obvious illustration um, and for I mean, poetry, kind of in the same boat where anything and everything can be poetry. <laughs> yeah. Grew up with that, and um, even things that are beyond words can be a uh, visual poetry as well. So, awesome. Andrew's also great because she's got a, a, a feminist philosophy background. So, all of the people that annoy me in our department. Um, tend to cite like a ton of um, very like canonized male philosophers and Andra can in the Facebook debates that I get into be like they're not <laughs> citing him right and also why are they saying that there and it's, it's great you make a great team mm -hmm. yeah great uh, shade team <laughs> meanwhile I'm pretty much just on Facebook with poetry blog <laughs> <laughs> they both are way braver than me <laughs> to dive into the trenches of Facebook debates. Um, I actually want to start from the visual art perspective because I didn't actually know what you were saying. Like I understood it intellectually, but I was like, I feel like I need this broken down for me. And if I need it broken down for me, someone else in the world needs it broken down for them. Will you use some of your art to explain what you mean about, you said it's a very literary style mm -hmm. of creating art with a sort of narrative and so forth? I think um, partially because I draw okay, in the same way, yeah, the same way that I write, this is an in progress piece, but it's like, <laughs> <laughs> um, but the same way where you're just putting thoughts out, um, yeah. I kind of start with, I think on the next page too, it's like very beginning. Um, so just like starting with one thing. So that could be kind of like a sentence for me. Okay. And then starting from there and building off of that, um, especially with the stream of consciousness I wrote in a ton of journals. I mean, didn't we all? We're all angsty teenagers at some point. <laughs> <Not> <laughs> journal. Or something. All of us have been <laughs> um, so I think my sketchbooks developed in a similar way, and I do a lot more sketchbook work than I do. I'm getting more into doing big paintings and stuff cool. like that, but where I really thrive and where my work um, exists is mostly in sketchbooks because of that. Um, so it's kind of like, what is this entry for the day? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then... It also is a type of, like, spiritual channeling, too. Right? Yes. Like, um, also a very witchy person. So right. I, yeah. Talk um, about the spiritual.
spiritual connection. Yeah, so the stream of consciousness thing is specifically uh, kind of a type of, I guess, a sort of spell work. Uh, there is a really long-standing history with, um, I think it comes, I, mean, I have not done the research that I probably should have um, in preparation for talking about this, <laughs> but there is a history, especially in ancient Egyptian times, of artists doing the stream of consciousness work as a way to access another plane or other spirits, and they would have um, these guides with them that would make sure that they were eating and um, drinking and breathing, because... Um, and I've experienced this when I've gotten really into it, where you can just be drawing and then suddenly you're like gasping for air, yeah, you realize yeah. you haven't had any food for eight hours. Or, mm -hmm. um, and so it's kind of a dangerous thing if you're not going into it with the right perspective. And I used to do that a lot more until I met um, Naomi Graybill. She is a former boss of mine. We did face and body painting together. And she was like, what are you doing? You better be careful. Let's talk about what you're doing here. Uh -huh. Oh, you've almost passed out before from this? Let's, let's talk. So now I can, I think I make a lot more work than I used to because yeah, now I can do it being like, this, I've got all my stuff around me, yeah. I'm prepared. Yeah. Um, so it there's. It's wild that uh, I, like, I introduced her to a, another a witch in the area, uh, <laughs> and um, she had almost exactly, the, it wasn't exactly the same, it wasn't as like detailed, I think, and there weren't as many different kinds of shapes, but she had yeah. basically the same ink work as Andrea, mm -hmm. and they, I was like, oh, whoa, and that's when I learned yeah. that it was like a, also a spiritual Yeah, yeah. Thing. yeah. That's interesting. Um, I found when I was doing my MFA, and then this ended when I did my PhD. I thought it was just writing in general. And now I'm like, no, thank you. I'll eat. But when I was doing my MFA, I would get into sort of like this mode with my poetry and with my essays where I wouldn't stop for hours and hours. And then suddenly it would be like 10 hours and I hadn't eaten. So then I would just like pick up cold chicken in the kitchen so I could get back to getting it done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now as happy knows, I'm like, boundaries. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like a real <laughs> so way. I did this but, yeah. in undergrad. I had a project um, that was all about like reaching that higher level through art and yeah. um, transcending the body. And so I would like set it up so that I was safe and I would actually like right. check in with my ex and be like, hey, I'm going to do this, but, you know, make sure like you're just playing video games over there. You'll be doing that for eight hours. I'll be basically doing this. <laughs> it's so just true. Yeah. On, <laughs> That's what um, a relationship is. I'll, I'll be on another plane doing art and if you could stop playing your video games for a second and make sure I'm alive, that'd be great. Um, yep. <laughs> but I did a whole project with it, and the art that I created was so weird. Um, but it started with this uh, previous project where I just uh, uh, sat with Frida Kahlo paintings, and so that was just a research based project. And I'd take one and I'd sit with it for hours and just like write down, have a conversation with it. Do you it still was... have the text from that? I do. I can send it to you. <laughs> There's some weird stuff. We very motherly. <laughs> Anytime you want to offer access to our viewers, your yeah. conversations with Frida Kahlo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Also, I mean, I was like, I'm not going to turn three. So. That's even better. <laughs> <laughs> working through some things. Yep. Yep. But So was she. <laughs> so was she. Um, but yeah, that's definitely where I come from with my art and where it exists now. So it's, it's come a long way. <laughs> from Frida Kahlo in um, conversations. Yeah. Usually always birds. Okay. But just always comfortable. <laughs> we'll, we'll have um at least at some point during this I've learned video editing in the last mm -hmm. few days, which is probably not high tech for all of you, but I'm like, I know how to put a picture where we should be when the video is scrolling, mm -hmm. where we can post any art that yeah, you'd be willing absolutely. to let us have mm -hmm. up. And then we're at nine minutes, so we're running low on time. Sappy. Oh, cool. Um, you can talk about, like, the book you read from and the flash mm -hmm. briefing on the podcast. You can talk about what you're studying right now. You can mm -hmm. talk about someone that you watched on Netflix that you're like, okay, okay fuck yes. Uh, <laughs> the <talk>. Netflix special, <laughs> Hannah, yeah. Hannah Gatsby's. Hannah Gatsby's Nanette. Oh. Watch it. Um, 
Yeah, and yeah. truthfully, before we all started recording, I think we were sitting here like, I cried. I couldn't stop watching. I yeah, <laughs> yeah. I watched it with a friend who I like, who is Joe is, who is our our friend Colleen's uh, fiance um, and dear friend, and we, and I was like, oh, is it's you because she's like a butch lesbian who wears navy blue, and that is is, <laughs> and is well dressed, is very funny, and that's like is, and we were, I was like, well, is it's you, and then we started watching it, and I was like, haha, it's you, and then I was like oh it's you oh it's really really yeah. you like your therapist is probably watching this being yeah. like was my client superimposed on this like anyway yeah, so it gets yeah. into some real some real shit and I also I like as a side um I teach um a, a basically like intro to comp course that's a writing course that I theme around comedy and questions that Safi's like playing this down, but is actually the comedy person of Seattle <laughs> and also does her own stand up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I've, I've been known to dabble. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I theme it basically just around like questions that I'm asking and I drag my undergrads with me. Um, and, my office teaching. Um, and part of the like questions that I ask them is like, um, when is comedy an ethical prerogative? Um, when yeah. is comedy, uh, when is comedy appropriate to use in certain rhetorical situations? When is comedy appropriate to use in certain emotional and like material situations? Um, who should be doing comedy about what? Um, like what is the role of the comic as like, uh, yeah actor in social circles and stuff like that um all text is political the like so how do we engage ethically with certain topics in a in this specific context of comedy um and I feel like Nanette just is like this great I mean she's essentially quitting comedy in the Netflix special sorry spoiler alert uh but <laughs> But she talks about how comedy. No, <laughs> she talks about how comedy is like is inappropriate for certain stories of trauma because it edits out certain um, emotions that you have to feel to get over the trauma. Yeah. And I also like talk a lot in my class about like using comedy as a way to heal from trauma. So it's an interesting like counter perspective mm -hmm. to that. And so I've been thinking a lot about that. I've been thinking a lot about like. Um, comedy and like by extension um uh because i think that comedy is in essence like an act that requires thinking about empathy or the strategic withholding of empathy from right. certain parties explain that how so um because well my my like exam project is kind of interested in like who do we empathize with who do we feel like needs care who do we withhold care from who do we see as like having needs versus um, being dangerous, which often the two lines are very blurred when like yeah. race and gender and class come into yep. play. Um, and so I've been thinking a lot about empathy. And I think that in comedy, a lot of what I talk about with my students is like, who does this comedy hurt? And like, how does it hurt them? And why does it hurt them? Mm -hmm. um, or who does this comedy strategically not pander to? Who is made to feel uncomfortable? And who yeah. are we supposed to not feel bad? um about and Nanette does a great job of explain she uh, Hannah Gatsby explicitly says I am trying to make these people uncomfortable and these people should be uncomfortable and as a whole as an audience you should feel uncomfortable because I am talking about intense moments of pain so it's like really interesting um yeah 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 she has a line where she's like and uh for the straight white males in the audience <laughs> if you are feeling a little bit persecuted well, well spotted, yes. <laughs> and it's just this great, like, like I don't give a fuck about Side you. Sidebar again, <laughs> Sappy does the best impersonation. <laughs> and if you've seen that special, that is exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> Down to the cadence. Yeah, she's very yeah. great. Like, her delivery Oh my god, I'm going to so interrupt awesome. you. Do another. Okay. Um, <laughs> of Nanette. Yeah, sure. Um, okay, uh, well, she does a... Well, you know, I was told by my community... Uh, self-appointed <laughs> representative of my community that 
uh, I didn't have enough lesbian content. <laughs> I was on stage the whole time. <laughs> and you have to now watch Anna Gatsby's Anna Gatsby's in that because like I cannot describe how spot on that is. And actually for our last couple of minutes, I'm gonna make a quick segue. Okay. I think that a series, it's, it's easier to make the case, to be fair, right, that this is poetry as well. We could traffic in that. And we did that a little bit. I haven't put pressure on Sappy yet to be like, how is this poetry, Sappy? Oh, the, the, how the, is comedy poetry? Yeah, but oh. I think it's kind of obvious. So <laughs> can you, like, make it obvious even more so for oh, our viewership? it's like, it's so, it's about the cadence of the audience and the performer. And you also have to... Um, Wait, let's I'm, stop there first. So what do you mean by the cadence of the audience and the performer? Well, um, I think as really onto something. Hannah Gatsby says, uh, <laughs> comedy is about producing tension and then dispelling tension. Yes. Um, and so it is an ebb and a flow of discourse yep. between an audience and a performer. Um, comedy is also every, every word and facial expression that you do when you're doing a stand-up set is... Not uh, maybe not consciously planned, but is explicitly designed to elicit a certain reaction. Right. So I would say that the the poetry of comedy is like half the actual words that are spoken, mm -hmm. um, and mostly is the comics like tone and inflection and stuff like right. that. Like Hannah Gatsby's poetry is very different from say Maria Bamford's poetry which has a lot to do with like funny voices like the one that I've been imitating the most is when she's talking about her husband and she's like so when I learned that my scrumptious hubby at the age of 50 he's not in fact a virgin and I'd always dreamed of having a clean mind <laughs> but he's a dirty little monkey like that is all <laughs> that is all um, calculated and <laughs> it's not it's as painstakingly selected through trial and error, as I would imagine, like, a line of poetry would be. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Like, there's, like, implicit line breaks. In the vlog yesterday, we talked a lot about, like, using the space on the page to measure your breath or get the reader's breath to kind of sync up with yours. Mm -hmm. I think a case could be made that there's, like, many more levels of that happening in the comedy, right, where the tonal inflection, the pauses, the expressions mm -hmm. are all forms of, like, syntax, punctuation, line breaks, mm -hmm. using page breaks, using space on the page. Yeah, yeah. and a story or a joke has to be constructed in the same I mean I feel like well I feel like the, a joke could have as many punchlines as you want it to or a story can have as many points of laughter as you want it to but in general you have to construct the thing to deliver a specific kind of shape of a meaning yeah. doesn't have to be the same for everyone um, which is also really important about comedy is that it can have like a million different meanings or a million mm -hmm. maybe a lot but mm -hmm. it can have a lot of different meanings and be equally effective right? and yeah. I think sometimes I'm not gonna make a grandiose statement I can't back up here but mm -hmm. I think that that's something that has in kind with poetry mm -hmm. if that makes sense and actually I think it has in kind with visual art too oh, yeah. right Absolutely. um can you talk to actually maybe you guys can talk together or y'all sorry mm -hmm. about like creating tension an ebb and flow of the tension and release of tension. Like, do you see that happening when you do your visual artwork? Um, is there like a similar sort of like, because this is something I try to teach my students with poetry is I'm like, you need there to be like friction and there needs to be something that's just, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. Um, I know for me, one of the big things, cause I love filling a whole page with like really fine detailed stuff, yeah, which yeah. is just for, and now I know that it's all tension all the time um, when that <laughs> happens. Because when I was in art classes, they were like, why don't you give the viewers some space to, you know, take in all the intense details? I was like, no, 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 no. We got we to gotta push it on them. We got to bring it out. We got to get people talking to be like, ah! <laughs> and they're like, what if you just, you know, you take one little piece and then you leave all this space around it so that they have a balance. <laughs> understand i understand more now i still don't want to do I, it i also but. think that people the tension is obvious when people look at your art and there are so many the things that i love about andrea's art is that like there's a bunch of like um different kind of um textures and they all look organic and they're all kind of super like they're all interwoven and there are a few shapes that look like like all of her shapes combined look like organic shapes and it, people 
cannot handle the like parts that they can't identify and i find myself doing this being like oh it's a it's a flea whale (laughs) that's what you drew a flea whale and like people really grasp that trying to make meaning out of the many 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 shapes that you have and i think that's part of it what is it what is it (laughs) yeah and it's like i don't know like you can't really explain it because everything bleeds into each other and that's kind of the yeah. And that's part of what creates that tension between mm-hmm. like thinking you understand it and then not quite understanding mm-hmm. it, and thinking you get it and not quite getting it. Mm-hmm. How would you look that to comedy? Oh, well, <laughs> um, I think that the thing about comedy is like it's a, I like the medium because it behooves you to invite as many people in. But there is also explicit political worth in not letting people in. Yeah. So making a joke that, like say for example like with a lot of the comics of color that like i have gotten to watch there are jokes that like white people just aren't going to get and those are some of the best jokes that they tell but i will never have access to them and nor should i um and that's really super powerful it creates community um it like demonstrates a kind of like um allegiance to um you know people who've been multiply marginalized and then also you have this like the premise of comedy is that you're supposed to have people get the joke. So if you have a joke that is like, um, like comics will routinely, if they have other like specialized skill sets, will make jokes that only the people in that skill set will get. And then they have it, they are called upon to be like, to dispel the tension of some people not getting the joke yeah, by yeah, being yeah. like, yeah, anyway, that's for like whoever does rocket science in the room. Lol. <laughs> um, didn't end up working for NASA. Uh, or like um, Hannah Gatsby's uh, references in the net to um, art history, mm-hmm. where she explicitly makes these art history jokes yeah, that yeah. are fantastic and also is making a joke about the fact that no one's going to know what she's talking mm-hmm. about because art history is a very elitist, like historically a very elitist um, yeah, practice. Yeah. So I, I like the kind of like forever interplay of like, you want to invite as many people in, but you can also explicitly pick and choose what meaning you transfer to who, who has like, um, that's also part of like why I feel weird as like a person who does comedy. Um, I sometimes question whether or not it is an ethical imperative of mine to make fun of whiteness, um, or if that's just me giving myself permission to like make myself feel okay about things that I necessarily I might not necessarily like should be okay yeah. with um or getting in front of the joke beforehand too right yeah, yeah. so yeah. when yeah. like I think that part of the really powerful thing about when people make fun of people with power is that the people in power feel uncomfortable and like they have yeah, suddenly yeah. for a nanosecond like lost a little bit of power yeah yeah um, yeah, yeah. So, I don't know if that that that's, That's tension. Great, <laughs> um, and I will say we're out of time, but I'm, I'm fine with it because I had two people here. So that's my excuse. <laughs> I know I'm always going over. This made me realize we're going to do a blog post on explaining the difference between white and whiteness, right? As like vocabulary terms, mm-hmm. like how can you talk about whiteness when people talk about white people, how it doesn't always conflate, but sometimes it does and you have to figure that out. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll give you some scholarship articles when we do that. But this was awesome. Sappy, I'm going to put you on the spot. Will you do one quick impersonation for us as of, a goodbye? Of who? Of totally what? your pick. Whatever okay. you feel like. Um, just doing. because. I, okay, uh, I feel like I've been doing. I'm just. I I've been doing a lot of Australian. Um. Well, Hannah Gatsby is uh, Tasmanian, but uh, this is my impression of a white Australian. Uh, be being in nature in Australia because it seems like they are the only ones ever poisoned. Um, <laughs> which is why white people shouldn't have moved to Australia. And um, here we go. Well, you know, when I looked at the spider, no one had told me <laughs> that I shouldn't eat it, <laughs> and I didn't. <laughs> um, also, when I was swimming in the water, no one told me that you shouldn't swim at dusk. And then that jellyfish cloud wasn't a friendly one. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> don't, uh, don't run into a jellyfish cloud. Thank you both so much for taking the time. You have no idea how much I put them on the spot today. <laughs> so, so we all owe them our appreciation. All right. Remember, if you have any comments, questions, feedback, things you want me to tackle, or if you want to be featured in it, get me on Twitter. I have a Facebook page now. I succumbed to peer pressure. And there's also the podcast version of this. If you listen to the podcast version, there's also the YouTube version of this. Blah, blah. All right. Have a wonderful day. Bye.